everyone this is my next video today i'm going to explain it code question number 144 binary tree pre order traversal given the root of the binary tree we need to return the pre order traversal of its nodes values see in the example one what they given they given root of the binary tree with 1 and the left is null and the right is 2 we printed 2 then left is 3 then right is null so we are printed 1 0 2 3 and the output is we need to return in the pre order traversal pre order means first it will traverse root then left then right see here one is root okay then we traverse left here left is null then we came to right we printed this is the root node then we traverse left then right okay so output is 1 2 3 let's we can briefly understand how the pre order traversal is going to work in the whiteboard let's we can take example So pre-order means first we will traverse root, then left, then right. If root is null, means we will return. Now we will tra start to traverse. This is the root node. Okay. If the root node is there, means just we will print. Then we will traverse left. Then we came B node. This is the root. If the root is there, means we will print. Now we will traverse left. Here left side is D. The D node we will check. It is a not null. Just what we will do? We will print. Now we will traverse left. Here left node is null. If it is a null, means we will return. Means we will go back. Now root has been completed. Left node has been completed. Now right node. We will check right. See right is null. If it is a null, means we will go back. Now root has been completed. Left node has completed. Right node has completed. Now we will go back to this B. Now. root has been completed left node has been completed now it's time to go right side the right side is null if it is null means we'll go back now root has been completed here left subtree has been completed now we will traverse right subtree now c the now the root will be the c just we will print c now we will traverse left node here left node is e then now e will be the root if e will be the root means just what we will do we will print the e now we'll check the left node Your left node e is null. If it is a null, means what we'll do? We will go back, and here root has been completed, left node has been completed. Now we will traverse right side. Your right side is null. If we will go back, now see root has been completed, left node has been completed, right node has been completed. Now we'll go back to this thing. Here root has completed, left node has been completed. Now we will traverse right side. Traverse right node. Here f will be the root. Just we will print this f. Now check left side node. Left side node is null. If it is a null, means we will go back. Now see root has been completed. Left node has been completed. Now we will travel right side. The right side is null. We will go back. Now see root has completed. Left node has completed. Right node has completed. Now we travel all the nodes. Now we will be returning this a b d c e f. How it is going to print means first root a, then b. Then D, then C, then E, then F. This is by using the pre-ordered traversal by using recursive approach. Okay, by keeping these all things in our mind, let's we can enter into the coding part. First, what we are doing, we are creating empty vector with the integer type with the name VEC. We will taking pre-ordered function. We are passing the parameters of root and VEC. Finally, we are returning vector of the tra complete traversing. Now we are declaring one void with pre-order function. We are passing the parameters of root. It is a tree node type and vector what we created with the reference of VEC. Now we are checking the root is null or not. If the root is null, just we will be returned. In case if the root is not equals to null means what we are doing, we are pushing first root in the vector. After that, we are traversing left node. After that, followed by right node. By using pushback function, we are pushing the root node in the vector. After that, we are taking one pre-order function. We are pushing root left in the vector. It's followed by root right vector. We are pushing uh, right uh, node in the uh, vector. Let's we can dry run this example. How it is going to work? Let's we can see. First, we created a vector VEC, okay, VEC with empty vector. 
we are passed root and v is as parameters. We are returning v is here. Okay. Now we are checking if the root is null or not. It's one. The one is null. No, it's not null. Because what we are doing? Just we are pushing this root value in the vector. Now we are traversing left node. Here left node is two. Now two will be the root. Now we are checking the two is null or not. No, it's not null. So what we are doing? We are pushing in the vector. Now we are traversing left node. Here left node is four. Okay. Now four will be the root. Now we will check the root four is null or not. It's not null. So we are pushing in the vector. After that we are traversing left node. See here left node is null. When we reach null, what we are doing? We are returning back this four. See now. Root has been completed. Left node has been completed. Okay, these two has been completed. Now we are traversing right. Your right side is null. If it is a null, means we will go back. Now see, root has completed. Left node has been completed. Right node has been completed. Now going back to these two. Here, root has been completed. Left has been completed. Now we are traversing right. Your right is null, so we are going back. Now see, root has completed. Left Sub tree has been completed. Now it's time to traverse right sub tree. Okay. Now we are going to this tree. Now this tree will be the root node. Okay. What we are doing first, we are pushing this tree in the vector. Now we are traversing left node. Here left node is five. Now five will be the root. Now we are pushing five in the vector. Okay. After that, we are traversing left. Here left node is null. If it is null, means we will be returning. Now root has been completed, left node has been completed. Now it will traverse right. Here right is null, we will go back. Okay. Now root has been completed, left node has been completed, right node has been completed. I will go back to this three. Root has completed, left node has been completed. These two has been completed. Now it traverses right. After reaching right, we reach it to six node. We are passing six as root. Now you are checking. Six is null or not? It's not null. Now we are pushing in the vector. Now we'll traverse left. Where left node is null, we're going back. Now root has completed, left node has completed. Now we traverse right. Where right is null, so we are going back. Now see, root has completed, left node has completed, right node has completed. Okay, we reach the end. Now. We traversed all the nodes. Now it's time to return these values as pre we traversed the pre-ordered traversal. Now we are printing one, two, four, three, five, six as answer. Okay. Next we can understand the time complexity and space complexity of this logic. The time complexity is taking b of n, where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree, and we are traversing each node exactly once. So it is taking the time of b of n. Where it comes to the space complexity is taking b of n, where we are creating a vector to store all the nodes. So it is taking b of n. Every node we are calling upon the function. So function will take one space for each node. For n nodes, it will take n space. So it is taking b of n. Total, it is taking b of 2n, where 2 is a constant. Overall, we can tell it is taking the space of b of n. Now. We can enter into the iterative approach. How it is going to work? Let's we can understand. In this, in this, we are creating a stack. Stack will work based on default. Last in, first out. Okay. We will create one vector to store all the values. Okay. Here the top element is one. We will be storing the stack one. Okay. In next step, your top element is one. We will be pop up. We will be storing the vector. Now we will be pushing. Right node first, then left node because stack will work on last in first. Off. We want left node as first, so we push it second as before the right node. Okay. In next step, the two is the top element. We will be popped out from the stack. We will be stored in the vector. Now we will be checking this two right node and left node. Here right node is five. We are pushing. Left node is four. We are be pushing into stack. In next step, the Four with the top element, we will be popped out of from the stack. We will be stored in the vector. Now we will check the fourth node as left and right. Here, right node is null and left node is null. If it is a null, we will go back. In next step, 
the file the top element just we will be popping out this file from the stack we will be pushing on to the vector we will be inserting in the vector now we'll be checking uh, this as uh, left node and right node left node as null right node as null this has been completed now see root has been completed left node has been completed right node has completed if we think complete means this root has completed left subtract has completed now we are traversing right now top element is 3 okay just what we are doing we are pushing our top element is 3 okay just what we are doing we are popping out from the stack we will be inserting in the vector now we will be checking left node and right node here right node is not there the left node we have been inserting 6 okay in the next step the 6 is the top element we will be pop out from the stack we will be pushing in the stack now checking this left and right here left node is null and right node is null when stack is empty we come to know that we traversed all the nodes now we will return this vector see how it is going to work means first root is been printed then left subtree with two four five then it travels right subtree with uh, root three then six this is the logic by using iterative approach Let's we can understand proper in the coding part. First, we created empty vector with integer type. It iterative approach is working based on stack. So we will be creating stack with a tree node type with the name st. Now we're checking the root is null or not. If it is a not null means we will be pushing onto the stack. If the root is not null means what we are doing is we will check up to the stack should be not empty. One stack empty means we will come out of this while condition. Okay, how it is going to work? Let's I will write the code for that. While the stack should be not empty. Okay, now we will be creating tree node of current. We will be storing the top element in the current. We will be popped the top element from the stack by using the stack dot pop. After that, we will be pushing the current value in the vector by using pushback function. Then we will check the current right and current left. If they are not null means we will be pushing current right and current left. Okay. After complete traversing of all the nodes, once stack will become empty node, we will come out of this while condition. Finally, we will be returning vector VEC. Okay. This is the logic by using the iterative approach. Let's we can dry run with example. We'll get more clarity. We will be creating vector to store the result. Okay. VEC. After that, we uh, declare stack with the name S. Now, we'll check the root. The root is null or not. If it is not null, means just we will be pushing onto the stack. Okay. Now, the stack is not empty. Okay. The condition is true. Now, the top element is A. Just we will be popped out. We will be storing in the vector this A. Now, A is popped out. Now, we'll be checking the current right and current left. The current right is C. Now, C will be pushed onto the stack. Now, B. Current left is B. It is not null. So we are been pushing onto the stack. Okay. In next step, that B is the top element. We will be popped out. We will be stored in the vector. And I will be checking for B, current right and current left. For B, the current right is E. Now E will be pushed onto the stack. Uh, for current B, current uh, left is D. We will be pushed onto the stack. Okay. In next step, the D is the top element. We will be popped out. We will be pushing in the vector. For that, we are checking current right and current left. The current right is null. Current left is also null. Okay. In next step, the E is the top element. We will be popped out. We will be storing the vector. For that, we are checking current right and current left. Current right is also null. And current left is also null. In next step, the C is the top element. We will be popped out. And we will be storing the vector. For that, now we are checking current right and current left. The current right is null and the current left is also null. Now, once stack is becomes empty, we will come out of this while loop. We will be returning vector. This is the answer. Okay. This is the logic by using iterative approach. Next, we can understand the time complexity and space complexity of iterative approach. The time complexity is taking big of n. Where n is the number of nodes in the binary, we are using while loop. It will traverse all the nodes exactly once. So, it takes the time of big of n. Here comes the space complexity is taking big of n because we are creating vector. If we store all the nodes in the vector, it takes the space of big of n. Okay, this is the logic by using iterative approach and before I show by using recursive approach. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you like this video, please like.